Hey y'all, welcome back to Weld.com. My name is Dale Spilker and today we'll be completing a standard 3G open root butt joint. The downhill mouth head will be used for the root on this particular joint. We'll be using a eighth inch Q6010 electrodes by Bowler. AWS spec on that is A5.1 with the manufacturer's amperage rating of between 80 and about 110 amps. We'll also be using a 332nd Bowler Fox EV50 7018 electrode, AWS spec, same thing, A5.1. Throughout this video, my co-host and I, Paul, will be working together to complete this joint. Let us know what you think. This particular joint configuration, or something similar to it, can be found in many industries throughout the welding world. Some of the main ones that I can think of off the top of my head would be the pipe welding industry, the shipbuilding industry, and the repair industries, as well as really any application where the backside of the joint isn't easily accessible by a welder, or maybe even by an inspector. For this particular weld, I use a common joint configuration using two plates, each of which are about seven inches long. This can also be done on six inch or eight inch plates. In this particular video, we're gonna be using a seven inch long plate by about four inches wide by three eighths of an inch thick. The steel that we're using for this is A36 mild steel. The plates are prepped with a 30 degree bevel. We used uh, mechanical means to prep those. You can also use thermal means to prep this or you can use a grinder. A 332nd land and a 332nd root opening is what we're going to use for this particular joint. This creates an overall groove angle of around 60 degrees. For this joint, I also prefer to use runoff tabs to hopefully control our penetration at the beginning and end of the joint. For some applications, runoff tabs aren't utilized or maybe can't be utilized. You just have to pay close attention to your starting point and your finishing point. For this weldment, a Lincoln Precision TIG 375 will be used. For the duration of this particular joint, we're going to be using direct current electrode positive polarity DCEP. For the root weld on this joint, we'll be using a drag angle of about 10 to 15 degrees with some deviation as needed. If for any instance you have to lower that angle or even bring that angle up a little bit higher, that can be done. That 10 to 15 degrees is a rule of thumb. It's not something that has to be stuck to unless you're working off of a WPS, a welding procedure specification. I generally like to set my machine at around 93 amps for this particular joint. Throughout the weld, I also like to apply slight pressure to the rod right behind it on the electrode holder. Now what this does is it aids in breaking down the edges of the bevel for that root weld. This will also allow us to see slightly deeper root penetration, as well as a more consistent profile on the back side of the joint, the side you can't see while you're welding it. Stops and starts for the root pass will be feathered out, which means ground, um, which will allow for proper penetration on the restart. Different welders use different techniques for feathering out the restarts. You can use a file, you can use a grinder. I personally use a four and a half inch grinder with a slimmer grinding wheel. Um, or a cutting wheel on it. And I like to use a little bit thicker of a cutting wheel. Once I have completed the root, I remove all the slag with a wire wheel and I proceed to inspect the back side of the root. Slag can be removed with a few different methods. I prefer to use a wire wheel. I feel like most welders prefer to use a wire wheel. I feel like it does the best job as well. During inspection of the back side of the root, I'm looking for proper joint penetration as well as a consistent bead profile. In simple terms, on that back side of the joint, it should look like a bead was ran on it. Undercut at the toes of the weld on this side are something that should be avoided, or if it occurs, it should be thoroughly inspected. On that back side, we're also looking for things such as underfill. We don't want any underfill on this particular joint, especially on that root side, because remember, like we mentioned before, on the root side of the joint, it's not necessarily a side that you can easily get to as a welder. Before the fill passes are started, and I've completed my visual inspection of the joint of the root pass, I will grind the root, paying close attention to the area of the joint where the weld toe meets it. In most cases, I end up grinding this portion down to shiny metal. Caution should be taken not to grind too deep. Keep in mind, the bead you're grinding on is very, very thin. It's only one pass of weld and it's an open root joint. So it creates a very, very thin situation. You don't wanna grind that area too thin. If you start to see a little bit of bluing, you have probably went a little bit too deep in that situation. The reason why I prefer to grind the root in this manner is to avoid slag entrapments between the root pass and the next pass. Doing this can also help repair an area of the joint that may not initially 
had the best appearance or the best penetration. Once I've completed all the steps mentioned, uh, the root pass, I will start the process of filling the joint. This next layer is commonly called the hot pass throughout the welding industry. Some individual classes or some particular welders might call it something different. I feel like hot pass is most commonly used. For this pass, we will be using a five to 10 degree push angle with my machine set at around 91 amps. We'll be using weave beads for the fill on this joint. Throughout the hot pass, I will pause on the edges of the joint, generally keeping a mental count of how long the pause is just to create consistency throughout the joint and consistency throughout my weld. All while keeping an eye on the molten weld pool to ensure it has penetrated the root and each member of the joint. I'm really looking at this particular layer on my hot pass. I'm looking to make sure my root is penetrating the root and it's not burning through the root or completely melting through it. Once the fill passes are complete, if time allows, I prefer to allow the joint to cool thoroughly for around 10 minutes. Sometimes it's a little bit less time, sometimes it's more time, depending on the particular joint, the size of it, if it's a pipe, I just like it to cool down before I start my reinforcement layer. The one thing I don't wanna do on my reinforcement layer is to let it cool down all the way cold to room temperature or have that joint be well over 400 degrees or even hotter. Throughout the reinforcement, I'll have my machine set at either 93 or 94 amps. Um, that's my particular sweet zone with this type of weld. Before starting the welding process, I like to mentally plan my reinforcement layer. Some things I consider are rod size, groove opening dimensions, as well as the bead width requirements if we're working to a WPS or working to some sort of procedure. For this joint, I would prefer to stay under about 3 8 of an inch for my bead width. That should set me up for a two bead reinforcement layer. My groove opening is about 3 8 of an inch now. If I tried to run just one bead, I might be over that 3 8. So I'm gonna go ahead and stick with two passes on this joint. Throughout the reinforcement layer, as I mentioned previously, I use a weave bead technique, pausing consistently to allow the cross section of the weld to fill in. I also use that counting technique here as well. I keep a mental note of how long I pause on each weld toe. That allows me to create a nice consistent bead throughout the duration of the weld, to create a nice consistent finished product. And that's what it's all about. Upon completion, I do a visual inspection of the weld. I completed checking for obvious defects such as undercut, underfill, porosity, incomplete fusion, or a whole gamut of other ones. In the instance I have a defect, I will take the proper measures in repairing the joint. Proper measures can include maybe running a bead on the toe of one of the welds, it can also be something as drastic as grinding the whole reinforcement down and putting a new reinforcement layer on. If you guys have any questions about how this particular joint can be done, maybe, di maybe you have an opinion on how it can be done differently. Let me know down in the comment section. I'd love to hear your opinion. I'd love to hear your thoughts on it. Also, please don't forget about our form over on weld.com. You can ask any question from what machine do you think I should buy or maybe just post the weld to brag a little bit. I look forward to hearing from all y'all. Um, thank you.